In part three, we're going to create the WCF service and configure in Hibernate. So we'll create a new WCF service. We'll add the in Hibernate 3.2 binary references. We'll create a customer class. We'll create a in Hibernate base class, which contains our in Hibernate configuration. And then we'll create a method to retrieve data using in Hibernate. And then we'll test the service uh, from within Vid uh, Visual Studio 2010. So next, let's add a WCF project to our current solution, WCF service application. I want to call it WCF NH5. And then the first thing I want to do is I want to add my in Hibernate references. And then let's add our in Hibernate base class. So add class. Then we can add our using statements as well. And then create the methods and the, the class objects, the in Hibernate configuration uh, object and the ses and the session factory. And then just, just add the configure uh, method and the con configure in Hibernate method. Don't forget, I'm going to need to modify this to the current database which I'm using. Uh, the configure, it contains which, which a driver that it, we are going to use uh, and the isolation level. There's lots of different attributes that you can use. Uh, and then also uh, the H, the mapping by code functionality. We're going to create the customer class in the next step, but basically these three uh, methods and those two uh, objects we need to create in the in Hibernate base class. Let's exit out of our in Hibernate base class, and we'll add our another class that's called customer. We'll add our in Hibernate directives, and then we'll modify our class to look like this. Basically, uh, elements to contain our to create our class, and then the class mapping, which is used by in Hibernate to map uh, our objects to our database tables. So let's close down the customer class. And then I'd like to delete these and create my own. So let's delete those. And then we'll create a new WCF service. So add new item and scroll down until we find WCF service. And then we're going to call it just NH. And within the, the inh.cs file, let's change this default method to be uh, a get customer list, which returns a list of customers. And then close that down. Next, let's, let's open our SVC file and add our directives. These are the same directives that I've been using for the, for the entire lesson. And then let's add our get customer list method and then basically what this uh, method does is it it uses our in hibernate base class and con configures in hibernate for us uh, it uses a, a session per database transaction uh, in, in in hibernate the imp implementation concept and then it uses link to in hibernate uh, to, to query the data from our, from a database and then it goes through a for each adding the results to our to our list and then if there is data in the customer in the customers list then it'll return the customers if not it'll return null so now let's set this project as set as startup project and then click our service and play set as start page and let's run it and then double click on our on the method and click invoke 
and there's our data. So we know our service is working. An important uh, thing to note is that you will need to create this client access policy.xml file and place it into your WCF NH5 uh, directory. It's, it's going to be required for the Silverlight uh, application to call this a WCF service. In part four, we're going to create our Silverlight 5.0 application and consume the WCF uh, service that we created in part three. Uh, so we're going to create the, the Silverlight 5.0 application and add a data grid control to it. We're going to add a local service reference uh, and we're going to call uh, the WCF service and populate the data grid with data. In a new instance of uh, Visual Studio, let's create our Silverlight, app Silverlight application. So file, new project, let's click on Silverlight. Silverlight application, I'm going to call it Silverlight NH5. Click OK. I'm going to use Silverlight 5, so be sure that if you want to use Silverlight 5 that you've downloaded the correct add-in, and then click OK. So let's add a data grid. Go to into our toolbox, drag and drop it to, to where we want it. And make a slight modification to add in the scroll viewer and a stack panel and give it a name. So next let's add our service reference. Right click on references, add service reference. And this is the address of the WCF uh, on the local host within a, vid, a Visual Studio. It's, the, it's a local host one. So click go. Click on it. You see we have the git customer. And, and let's just for since simplicity we'll leave it as service reference one. And let's click OK. Let's go back into our, our main page XAML and we'll add a loaded event. Create a new for us. And we'll go into our page behind and see that it created our, our method for us. And then we're also going to create the the method uh, that we're going to call from our loaded event, which is going to actually get the result from our from our WCF service and populate the grid the the data grid with that data. And then let's add this code, which is our service reference, creating an instance of the NH client, and then adding the client.listCompleted uh, delegate to an event handler which we created just a minute ago which is this method the client get customer list completed you see that that's the same as this and then client.get customer list async and then let's run it There you go. In conclusion, uh, we populated a data grid uh, within a Silverlight 5.0 application, and we used the WCF, which uh, utilized in Hibernate 3.2 uh, to retrieve the data from, from, from our database. Uh, we created a, a test SQL Server database instance. We generated a database table using in Hibernate, which was based on what, what we had already learned in Lesson 13. We created a WCF service and configured in Hibernate, and we created a Silverlight 5.0 application and consumed the WCF service.